Hi, I'm Shana from Sage Country Herbs, and I am here at Mount Pisgah Arboretum with Mountain Rose Herbs, and we're going to go and enjoy some of our plant friends of the Pacific Northwest. Come along. So let's start with these majestic trees right here. These are some of the common oaks of the Pacific Northwest, and I love talking about oaks because they range all across this country. So oaks are part of the plant family Fagaceae. They are of the genus Quercus, which is just a fun genus to say. I'll say it again, Quercus. And there are many, many, many different species. And so I come from Southern California, the hills of uh, Northern San Diego County. And down there, uh, we have a lot of the coast live oaks and they have smaller leaves and they tend to be a little bit smaller in stature than these majestic, fabulous oaks that are up here. Um, some of the differences that I can notice just being here is because we don't tend to be nearly as um, moisture heavy down there. We do get a good amount of moisture from the ocean, but that moisture burns off. And so we don't tend to have a lot of moss like this growing on our trees. Uh, some of the other things that I can see are, is the usnea hanging down. Some of these wonderful lichens that have this great relationship with trees. Um, I love usnea. I'm gonna focus on that for a moment because one of the coolest things about usnea is the fact that it's kind of like, I like the metaphor that usnea is like an external lung for the trees that you know people will learn that trees are part of like taking in the carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen um, but within that there's also a lot of toxins that are found in in the air and usnea actually is a wonderful filter of those without actually holding on to them because there are some lichens like usnea that we can also use for their medicinal benefits when i look at these trees around me what i see are ecosystems like Right here, this is an oak woodland, and oak woodlands are, are beautiful, of course. They have a primary character of oaks as their kind of star. But then there's all of these other side players, and the usnea and the other lichens that are hanging from them, and the moss. These are some of those side players of the ecosystems that these oaks help to create. Beyond ecosystems, some of the claims to fame of oak itself is food. Um, where I come from, the oak is actually the primary food source historically of the um, of a lot of the indigenous tribes of southern california so some of the main ones that i focus on are the kumeyaay that's the one of the primary nations of san diego county and the kumeyaay are very very well known for their historical use of the oak and there are many different oaks um, but the beautiful thing is that all oaks create their fruit is a dry fruit called an acorn. It's a nut. And um, like many nuts, they have a hard outer shell. They have some meat on the inside, and that is the actual seed. And so you could sprout that nut. And just like most trees, they produce so many nuts. And if you have oak tree in your yard, you end up with so many babies uh, of the oak uh, acorns that were either planted um, by nature itself or more likely planted by the squirrels in the neighborhood. And the interesting thing about squirrels and nuts is that we all, you know, we learn this when we're young that like squirrels take in the nuts and they make caches. But the interesting thing is that those, they make caches all over the place and they don't always remember everywhere that they put their nuts. So there are some nuts that end up being forgotten about or maybe that squirrel gets taken out by a coyote and so some of the nuts that it actually put into storage then just sit there and maybe there's a rain and those nuts actually start to grow and now you get new trees and so there's this relationship with the oaks producing the nuts and then those Oaks also have a, a relationship with the varmints and the different animals that live around it that actually help to take its seeds and plant it for the trees. It's just a relationship that is natural, that naturally forms in nature. Um, and I love thinking about these relationships. You know, the bee, when it goes to a flower, is not thinking, well, I'm going to help pollinate that flower so that then, like, no, there's just the bee is there for its own needs of gathering nectar and gathering pollen. And the flower is like, well, hey, this is actually helping me get this, you know, get the fertilization of my eggs happening or the pollination, I should say. 
I love the relationships. I love diving deeper than just name that plant into why, what's its role in its relationship with its ecosystem. So let's go back to the oaks. So oaks produce acorns and acorns are, um, they're actually a perfect food. They are rich in all the macronutrients of, they have good quality essential fatty acids. They have good quality protein. They have good quality complex carbohydrates and fiber. They are complete and perfect in terms of being food. However, some of the drawbacks of eating oaks, and I've had people ask me in herbal classes like, oh, aren't acorns toxic? To which at first I laughed. And then I realized, oh, it's kind of rude to laugh at somebody's question. So let's deal with this, you know, real. Um, oaks are not toxic, um, however, they are incredibly rich in tannic acid. And that tannic acid is very, very, very drying. Um, most people have experienced the drying effect of tannic acid if you have had a cup of black tea and you take a sip and your tongue feels all dry like a piece of boot leather, you've experienced tannic acid. Well, if you just go and crack an acorn and you know pop the acorn, the meat of it, and you start chewing and you're gonna start getting all like dried out and it'll be a, you will have to really work hard to swallow it because it'll dry everything out and dry mucosal membranes actually make it a lot harder to swallow. So, and if you do get it down, it will dry out all the mucosa of your stomach. So you can totally see where somebody might say, oh yeah, that's toxic. But it's not toxic like releasing compounds that will kill you. It'll just dry everything out. And if it makes it all the way down, it'll just constipate you really bad. So yes, it will feel toxic. But the key is that there's nothing actually that is going to, um, you know, have a, um, a uh, like poisonous effect on your body. It's a physical effect of drying out your, mucos your mucosal membranes, and that doesn't feel good, um, but it's also really easy to mitigate that because tannic acid is water soluble. So traditionally, you take acorns and you crack them and you either soak the meat of the seed or you grind it up into a powder and you soak it and you flush it with water and that water is extracting out the water soluble tannic acid, sometimes just called tannins. So that now renders all of this wonderful protein, fat and complex carbohydrates ready to eat, um, as well as um, ways of storing it as, as well. So, um, so acorns are amazing food, really important because when people think about, and I love teaching about the idea of what's called the Paleolithic era. This is the time period from about 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. And really it's a time period of hunter gathering. So, and it ended because humans started planting crops and not moving around. And so that kind of ended that Paleolithic era. Um, but people think about this in these like caveman terms um, and while certainly hunting is very important during that time, hunting, when you don't have guns and scopes and that type of thing, is really, really, really hard. And gathering is when you understand the cycles of nature and when things are ready to be gathered, it's actually really, really easy. And everybody can take part in the gathering. The children, the women, the men, the elderly, everybody can take part in the gathering. And then it's also much easier to be able to store things like acorns for a long time, uh, like a year until your next acorn harvest, much easier than trying to process all the meat and store that for a long period of time. And so um, I really like to think about the hunting gathering. I like to actually shift it to gathering hunting because the gathering is such an incredibly vital part. And the other aspect of gathering is where's the diversity of food come from? It comes from gathering. You know, there's all kinds of reasons where hunting is beneficial to people who are living a sust uh, sustenance lifestyle, but it's the gathering that actually creates the different flavors, the different nutritional profiles. So uh, acorns from oaks are really in terms of like life maintenance. Acorns from oaks are where it's at. Oh yeah. There's all kinds of medicinal aspects of oak as well. Most of the medicinal aspects of oak are coming from that tannic acid, the tannins. So when we think about tannins, um, it's in the bark. Um, you don't generally use the, the barky bark, you use what's called the cambium layer, which is the secondary layer underneath. 
Um, the tannins are found in the leaves and they're found in the roots, but why on earth would you ever try to take down a tree for tannic acid? That's just ridiculous. Uh, but oak bark, especially on branches, much, much easier to gather. You would never gather bark from this because you'd be opening up the tree to potential infection. But uh, one of my favorite ways to work with oak bark medicine is after a storm when branches have come down. Personally, I love to work with medicine that is kind of presented by nature. Um, I like to take advantage of abundance and everywhere has abundance in some way. You know, um, in Southern California, we have a lot of fruit. I mean, we have a long growing season. There's a lot of fruits to take advantage of abundance. But when we recognize abundance is just what is plentiful and it could be food and it could be, well, it could be a wide variety of things. So when we recognize what is abundant, um, well, after a storm and you've got all these branches, what a great time to then go and collect your branches and be able to peel away that bark and make that bark into medicine that then you can use long term. So the medicine that we would be looking at would be the tannic acid and that is highly astringent. Tannins are astringent, so what they cause in drying you out, we can also use to our benefit. So anytime you have something that is like a croupy cough, something like wet and mucousy, really wet mucousy sinuses, wet mucousy, you know, lungs um, or throat, and you just keep having to go like, oh, <clears throat> you know, you're trying to like clear that, that mucus. And that is a, a, actually a wonderful thing. That wetness is allowing you to move that mucus. And I also think it's really important to understand mucus is not the enemy here. Mucus is number one, it's keeping everything uh, lubricated. Number two, uh, mucus is also wrapping around infectious material like bacteria or virus. And so that then allows us to be able to get it out by by <clears throat> you know clearing that mucus and sometimes being able to uh, to spit that mucus out you're actually getting some of that infectious material out so mucus is actually a really important part and I say this because I'm up in the Pacific Northwest and I never dealt with with dry mucosal membranes up here but once I moved down to the Southwest it is a primary component of my clinical practice that we deal with dry mucosal membranes like all the time um, and I learned from that how to work with my mucosal membranes. So I really appreciate being able to understand the physiology of the mucosa because it's part immunity, it's part of our protection, um, it's also part of our just our general digestion and and how it works. So, so let's finish up how we can work with tannic acid. So tannic acid is inherently drying. So we're going to use it for wet mucosal membranes. And that can be, you know, anything from a, you know, uh, from a sore throat to, you know, weepy eyes to uh, sinuses to, um, you know, a, um, a wound that is really weepy. What feels more magical is the way that tannic acid actually has an affinity to binding to things. So tannic acid binds to protein and our skin is made of protein. And actually every, every mucosal membrane is made of protein. Actually every cell in our body is made of the breakdown products of protein, which are amino acids. So every cell in our body is made of amino acids and fatty acids. So those are two of those things that we find in the acorn um, that allow us to have the extra raw materials to be able to make a new membrane. So every membrane in our body from a blood cell to a skin cell to a throat cell is made of protein and tannins bind to protein. So that means that when we have a sore throat, we can drink some oak bark tea and that's going to bind to the protein layer of our throat and create a soothing healing emolliency that allows that to heal. You have a sunburn. You can put some tea of that has tannic acid in it, maybe from an acorn or maybe from some oak bark, and that is going to bind to the protein layer of your skin, of that sunburn, and actually make a, a soothing healing emolliency. Because how do you heal from a burn or a wound? You need the next layer of skin to come up. So the easiest way to heal is to protect it so that top layer is not so easily wounded again 
So you use that tannic acid, usually in tea form, maybe as a poultice, and that is going to help bind up and then allow that next layer. So this is so well documented that burn centers across America will use tannic acid as a first layer, especially on a first or second degree burn. The other thing that tannic acid binds to um, is a classification of chemicals called alkaloids. Alkaloids, some of them are going to be chemical in nature, but there's a ton of alkaloids found in nature. And the cool thing about tannins binding to alkaloids is that a lot of things that are potentially toxic are alkaloids. Now, there's also a lot of alkaloids that are not toxic at all, but it's so well known that tannic acid binds to alkaloids that in poison centers across the country, if you don't know what your kid drank or what you drank that is making you feel yucky and you go to a poison control center, they will give you tannic acid to drink because if it's still in your stomach, that tannic acid will actually bind up with the alkaloids and stop your body from absorbing them into your bloodstream. So this is so well documented. This has nothing to do with herbs at this point. This is burn centers across the country and poison control centers across the country using tannic acid. Now, are they getting their tannic acid from the oak? Probably not, but that's beside the point. Historically, we can use oak in that same way. And where did you know the burn centers and the, and the poison centers learn this from? Well, historically, you know, medicine came from plants, so. Historically, it probably was used from something like an oak tree or something like that. Um, but there is so much history of the way that we can work with this. And it, it seems really overly simple. But what I find in medicine is that most of the time it is actually mostly pretty simple. And if we apply it, it's the way that we apply things that can become more complex. But when we understand these foundational aspects of oaks have tannic acid, that tannic acid is astringent, we can use it for a wide variety of things from sunburns to, um, to the potential um, you know, sore throat, to the potential you know, somebody drank something bad, but also just that tannins are drying. So they actually help to dry up a swollen tissue like a bug bite. I love, I've taken just like a leaf of an oak, chewed it up into what's called a spit poultice and put it on a mosquito bite. And it's amazing how it will stop the itching. And what was a bump is now gone. So I think of astringents as like my go-to first aid herbs. And the fact that you can look around and there is so many plants with tannic acid in them, that makes it when you understand the plants around you, you can actually have all kinds of medicine at your fingertips without even realizing it. Thank you so much for joining us for a plant walk at Mount Pisgah, and I hope you come back and see more plant walks, and maybe I'll see you out in the field.